So what is the good news of Jesus Christ? Mm, the fact that Jesus Christ had died on the cross for our sins. Bam! You got it! I'm impressed. Right on. So what are the two things that you have to do to appropriate the exchange of your sins for Christ's righteousness. Basically, what are the two things that you have to do to be saved? Uh, give. One of them is give your life to God. Um, you were doing so good! You were doing so good! Oh. <laughs> I don't know, honestly. Uh, you were doing good. You were doing good. Does the word repent sound familiar? Uh, repent, yes, that, that does sound familiar. And that was to turn, right? Right, yes. And that's so, so that's kind of what you're saying. It's to, to turn from our sin, turn from ourselves, and to turn to God. And then the second yes. part was to... That one I don't know. That was the aspect of put all of your faith and trust that when Jesus Christ died on the cross and said, it is finished, and paid for the sin as a done deal, that you trust what he says, that he actually did do it. The debt actually is paid, and you put all of your faith and trust in him and in him alone. So on that day that you die and you stand in front of God, you know that you are seen by him as the righteousness of his son. So, short statement is, you repent and you put your faith and trust in Jesus Christ and in Him, and in him alone. Right. Does that sound familiar? Nah. Yeah. So the question is, do you think that's true? You see, that's always been a tough one for me to answer. I believe, like, I believe that it did happen, and, like, when Jesus died on the cross, I believe that that did happen, but it's just really tough for me to answer that one. Well, you say you, be you believe he died on the cross, do you believe he was raised from the dead? See, that's the part that I just don't know. Is it the supernatural aspect about it? Or is it an aspect of um, not trusting the historical account? Or what is it that causes you to doubt it? Um, probably the spiritual aspect about it. So, you're 19. Can you think of anything that you would be willing to actually um, go to your death proclaiming? Can you think of any one thing where somebody would say, you better stop saying that or you're going to get put to death? Um, sorry, could you rephrase the question? Sure. So let's say, um, let's say, I want you to deny that you like to play Fallout. If you don't deny it, you're going to have to die. Hold on, Bob. Thank you, though. So if somebody, if somebody actually tried to threaten your life, because you said you like Fallout, and they said, you better take that back or I'm going to kill you. You'd take it back, right? You're not going to die to defend whether or not you like Fallout. Oh, they can kill me however way they want. No, I know, you but you're... But, no, but my, I'm trying to give you an example of something worth dying for and something not worth dying for. If somebody came along to me and said, Peter, what's your favorite food? 
And I said, well, my favorite food is uh, eating crab. Well, Peter, you better deny that or I'm going to kill you. I'd be like, okay, I don't like crab. <laughs> you win. You don't need to kill me. So I'm trying to get what, what is it for you? Is there anything that you think might be worth dying for in terms of what you believe? Well, I don't know. I give my life to save one of my family members. I agree with my you friends. there, but that's, that's different. I'm not talking about saving somebody. I'm talking about, is there anything that you believe that is worth dying for? Anything that I believe. Anything you believe. A belief that is worth dying for. I don't know. All right. Fair. Fair question. Now, I want to take it one step further. Can you think of anything... Hold on, bunny. Can you think of anything that you'd lie about that would be worth dying for? Anything that I would lie about? Yeah. Like if somebody said, hey, Atomic, I want to make up a, a secret um, about anything. Pick your lie, whatever it is. And you and I, we're going to lie about this. And oh, by the way, if we do this, people are going to want to kill us. Would you be like, yeah, I want to sign up for that, <laughs> right? Well, I oh, wow. What happened there? Uh, that's a guy who just shot me to death. Uh, the bad guy. So, anyways, like I was saying before, I was shot to death. Is there anything that you have that's worth dying for? So I was trying to put you into the position of understanding the apostles. So the apostles claimed that they saw Jesus Christ after he came back from the dead. And they claimed that to the point of where they were put to death for saying it. Twelve guys. I'm sorry. Okay, well, that's what they that's what they claim they saw. I never exactly. Saw it. No, I agree with you, but I'm just saying, if it were a lie, can you see twelve guys killing or getting killed for a lie? I mean, one of them would crack, right? One of them would be like, "Hey." I'm not, this is not worth dying for. I'm not doing this. Right? Yeah, that would, that would make sense. Why would you want to die over a lie? Exactly. Well, that's exactly what. I'm sorry, you're cutting up. Yeah, can you still hear me? Uh, now I can. That's exactly what they were faced with. Either they were 12 guys who made up a lie and took it to the point of dying which is not really a reasonable thing to think of one of them would crack or they were 12 guys who had seen something that was so true that they were willing to die for it so the fact that they were willing to die for it is a pretty good indicator that what they were saying was true, might have been. was trustworthy. Say what? Like would have been true, yeah, makes sense. Yeah, so when you think about doubting that account, think about the fact that 12 guys went to their death claiming it was true to the point of where some of them were crucified. Some of them were, um, what do you call it? Uh, I think one of them was, was stoned. I mean, they were all wrecked. Kind of like I just got wrecked. Probably not that fast, though. But all of them never changed their story, not even once. All 12 guys. Now, I take that back because one of them killed themselves. That was Judas. He's the one who betrayed Christ. So, 11 guys 
claimed that they saw him alive again after they saw him die on the cross. So does that lend credibility to that truth claim? I suppose it is worth to consider. Well, that's what I wanted to pass on to you. Sorry I did a bad job trying to give you an analogy for it. I was just trying to get your mindset around would, would there be anything that you'd be willing to die for as far as an idea goes? Because for me, I am willing to die for this truth that Jesus Christ is in fact God himself. He's seated right now on the throne and he did pay for my sins, your sins, the sins of the whole world. And that you can trust it. I'm willing to die for it. Now I know I just died in game, but we both know that's nothing. But I'm willing that if somebody came into my house right now, somehow subdued me and my whole family, I am willing to die for this truth. And I hope that might be a testimony to you that it's worth considering whether or not it actually is true. That 11 guys were willing to die for it 2,000 years ago, and I am willing to die for it today. I hope that might be something that might make you consider whether or not that truth claim has some real value to it. Would you think about that? Yeah, I believe it's worth considering. Cool. I'm going to respawn real quick and see if I can come back. And we're back. Oh my Thanks, Bob. I appreciate you standing on my bag for me. That was mighty kind of you. It's probably, um, probably going to get you I still sitting up there. Me. Okay. Well, you can do it again, and I just come back again. Oh. So, did I get my stuff? Cool. Thanks, Bob. I appreciate you watching on my bag for me. You want to trade something? Wow, wait a minute. Bob's 112? When did you turn into 112? Is that a different Bob? That's the same Bob, isn't it? What level was he before? I didn't know Bob was 112. What'd you want to trade, Bob? Did you want something for me or just want to see my stuff? <laughs> I'm not a pastor, Bob. I appreciate the offer, though. <laughs> I got to start no, keeping track of that. I'm going to start a number of times I've been offered the pastor outfit. Yeah, pastor outfit. That's at least that's at least number uh, five. <laughs> Wait, can I get it? If, if, Question. If you don't want it, can I get it? Can you get what? Oh, the pastor can outfit? outfit? Sure, Bunny, you can have it. Uh, Bob's got it. Go ahead, Atomic. What's your question? Yes. Would you actually wear the pastor outfit if you were a pastor at a church? Um. I don't know. Maybe. Uh, probably not because I'm pretty sure that that's a Catholic pastor's outfit. Roman Catholic. And uh, I don't suppose you'd stick me with a stim pack, would you? Thanks. So I don't think I would because, um, yeah, it's a Roman Catholic outfit. So it's not really something that, um, that I'd really wear. I'm just going to step over here so that way... There you go. So anyways, um, yeah, I don't think I would. Why do you ask? Oh. Just, you know, just a question. Okay. Has no real meaning to it. Yeah, it, it doesn't, but it's um, it has an implied meaning. By the, by the number of times people have offered it to me, it does have a meaning to it, which I'm not quite sure why that meaning is important. But it's obvious that people think it does. Hmm. Huh, there's more than one of them. Yeah, I figured as much. Is somebody down over there? Did they need a stim pack? Oh, who went down? Get some water. What's up, Bob? No, I don't want the stim pack, buddy. I appreciate it, though. 
Death the Kid. How's it going, Death the Kid? That's a pretty sharp outfit you got there. Got like the top hat and everything like that. I don't, I don't want it, Bob. Honestly, it's okay. I appreciate the offer. We're good, buddy. Honestly, we're good. It's okay, Bob. Thank you, though. Anyways. So I hope you'll consider these things, um, Atomic. Yeah, I said I would. Cool. If you ever have any questions about it, please don't hesitate to ask me, okay? For sure. Cool. Dude, that's a sharp looking hat. I like that outfit. That's pretty cool. I have a spare. I have a spare one if you want one. You know, I wouldn't say no to that. It's a cool outfit. I I, I wouldn't mind that. If you got a spare one, that'd be cool. Can I get it from you in a minute? Yeah, sure. Alright, thanks. I don't know, maybe you can't hear me. Oh well. Does that does it sound like Monty Python, the weight of the duck, or is it just me? Uh oh. <laughs> That was pretty good. I thought I was outside the zone, but apparently not. Oh well. Well, now I know where the zone is. 